Good afternoon, everyone. We are a team number 18. And for a senior design project, our team uh, participated in the 2015 SAE Euro Design Case Competition, which was held on um, March 13th through the 15th on Lakeland, Florida. Our team consists of Mario Bataglia, Pedro Pacho, myself, Andres Alasai, and our faculty advisor is Dr. George Nicolai. So for this competition, our goal was to create a design and build an aircraft that could live as much better as possible while still uh, meeting the requirements set by the rules of the competition. We also wanted to represent Florida International University in, in an event of this magnitude in which teams from all over the world participate. Uh, so our objectives are one, to implement numerical analysis and as well as the knowledge acquired in the design process to, uh, to solve a real life problem. Uh, also, we wanted to perform research in several aerodynamic designs based on their performance and their manufacturability. And finally, uh, we wanted to evaluate each, each uh, design alternative on the cost and our possibilities to manufacture. Uh, so our motivation was to combine our, our theoretical knowledge as well as our craftsmanship to, uh, to solve a problem that has a real life application. Uh, also, we wanted to follow the, the previous team's initiative to uh, grow the interest in the aerospace, um, to grow in the, the field of aerospace in, the, in FIU as well as in the, in the Aerospace Engineering Club. So for the, the competition is divided into three classes. One is regular, micro, or advanced. Uh, and for with uh, budget and time constraints that we had, we decided that the regular class was the one in which we could get better results. And these are the requirements for the class in which we participated. The first one is that the, the maximum combined length, width, and height of the aircraft has to be 175 inches. The aircraft, including the payload, may not weigh more than 55 pounds. The uh, plastic. Uh, Fiber reinforced plastic is prohibited in all the parts, and uh, a single motor configuration, a single electrical motor configuration with a 1,000 uh, power uh, watt power limiter had to be used. So during the competition, our design was evaluated in three different phases. The first one was the technical report detailing the experience and the process of building the aircraft. The second one was the technical presentation in front of the group of judges at the competition, as well as the technical inspection to make sure that our aircraft met the, the requirements set by the rules. Uh, we also had a time of payload loading and unloading demonstration, and finally, we had the flight competition. In the process of the design, we evaluated three main alternatives, which are the wing collocation, the wing shape, and the openness configuration. For the wing location, we can have a high wing, a low, we could have a high wing, low wing, or a mid wing. For the wing shapes, there are different, sh different shapes, just as rectangular, cover wing, or elliptical wing. And for the empennage configuration, there are the H tail, conventional tail, there, and we also evaluated the V tail. For our proposed design, we selected the high wing, rectangular wing, and H tail configuration. The high wing we selected because it provides enough clearance from the floor for takeoff and landing, so that we don't scratch any part of the wing. Uh, for the it also having the center of gravity of the airplane underneath the center of gravity of the wing allowed, allowed us to fix the center of gravity and variate the payload without having the center of gravity moving. The rectangular wing, we selected it because it's easier to manufacture and most of the parts of the airplane were hardly considered for the manu uh, because of the manufacturing possibilities. And finally, the empennage was uh, for the empennage configuration, we selected the H tail, which uh, provided us enough uh, surface area to counteract any pitching or yawing moment that the airplane uh, could be experiencing. For the wing structure, we are we have uh, a wing span that is uh, that, uh, that is composed by two four feet uh, spars that connect all the ribs, so the Longest commercially available spar is four feet, so that's why we have an eight, an eight foot, uh, an eight feet wingspan, so that we can have uh, two connected spars to the and make a single wing. And then this, these are attached and reinforced by an aluminum tooth that goes in the middle and reinforces and provides strength to the whole wing. And finally, for the wing mounting, 
we came up with a particular design on the on the central ribs, where these are elongated, uh, I mean extended downwards, to implement a knob that is uh, a bolt that is going to attach securely the the wing to the fuselage. Uh, so for the airflow selection that we use for the wing, uh, we pretty much we based our our our, alternate, our alternatives. Uh, we uh, categorize them based on their aerodynamic performance and their manufacturability. So these are some of the airfoils that we consider. We narrow it down to the, to these five, and the CD twelve twenty three and the Ready zero zero seven were actually the two airfoils that provided us with the best uh, aerodynamic performance. However, both of those airfoils have very thin and long trailing edges, which are really hard to manufacture. So then we went with our best next choice, which was the FM423, which has a, a, a lift coefficient of 2.01, which still gave us a really good aerodynamic performance and excellent manufacturability. Um, so we wanted to size our aircraft correctly to have a, enough stability that, so that, the, the, so that the, uh, so the aircraft could fly without any problems with any, any payloads that we put. So in order to accomplish this, we follow mainly the mean aerodynamic core theory and the tail body <coughs> coefficient method. So the mean aerodynamic core, it, it acts as, it's a core that acts as if all the, uh, the surface area of each, um, of each rib is concentrated in that core. And the, air, and, the air, and the center of gravity of the aircraft itself, of uh, the wing itself, can, is placed in that core. Uh, knowing the, the, the wingspan and the surface area of the wing, we were able to determine the required surface area that we needed for the components of our tail in order so that it could handle the movement of the aircraft. Uh, the, the, the aileron sizings, usually they go from, they extend from 50% of the wing uh, to 90%, but we decided to go all the way to 100 because of, again, manufacturability, it was much easier to just have it all the way extended to all the way to the end. So these are the equations that we use to calculate the MAC and the, the, the tail volume coefficients for the vertical and horizontal tail. So our, the, the fuselage uh, mainly consists of um, balsa and light flight. So because we knew we were using an each tail configuration, we know that naturally our airplane was going to be tail heavy. So we wanted to make sure that all the electronics went to the front of the aircraft to counteract the, the moments created by the tail. So uh, the front compartments of the fuselage were sized according to, the, to whatever com electrical component was going to go in it. And also because our payload carrier was donated by FIU, we had to uh, use uh, those dimensions to design the, 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 the payload compartment. And for the for the tail structure, so as you can see, our, st our tail structure consists mainly of a uh, rectangular, uh, com uh, one horizontal rectangular component and two verticals. And uh, it's mainly made out of balsa wood. And what was great about this tail is that we will be able to use uh, a lot of the spare parts that we have from the construction of the wing into building the, the tail. So for wheel build up, as you can see on this table, uh, it shows the weight of each component on the aircraft, then the moment they're going to generate, and the distance they're located in. So this is the total weight of the of the payload, assuming that it's going to carry 28 pounds. When provide and as a result, this is the total moment. So so as as you can see, when you divide the the total moment by the weight, we obtain the to the distance of 12.89 to be the, the location of the of the CG from the from the uh, from the fuselage stage zero, which is the, 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 the front part of the airplane. So here's the structural analysis of the wing. We perform uh, several simulations to see if the airplane and the wing were able to stand some of the loads that are going to be experience during the flight. Uh, so on, on this one, we applied a, a, a payload of 55 pounds with, a, with, five, uh, with 3G, which were the worst case scenario of the simulations uh, that we will experience on the, 
on the competition since the maximum load that we're able to carry on the competitions are 55 pounds between the payload and uh, aircraft. And these are some of the uh, stresses that are experienced by the wind spar and the aluminum tube. So you can see the wind spar is going to uh, experience 2 psi and the wing tube, the aluminum tube, 5.28 psi. This is the, the structural analysis of the tail. So for a tail, we uh, mainly focus on knowing if the tail will be able to support the vertical, uh, the, yeah, the vertical tails that are going to be attached to the sides and their forces that are going to be applied to also the vertical tails. And this is the factor of safety and the bombings and stress experienced by the, by the horizontal tail. And finally, the fuselage. So these are the holes where the, where the fuselage is attached to the wing. So we wanted to make sure that during the flight, the wing does not unplug or fail from the, from, the, from the fuselage. And the factor of safety 1.3 and the bombing distress is 1.5. So for the model selection, we, we applied the Abbott's uh, propeller equation, which is on the top left. And uh, this equation relates power, propeller dimensions, and the RPMs. The 5.33 uh, is the uh, conversion factor, since the power is given in watts, and the propeller is given in inches, and 5.23 makes that conversion uh, error. And in order to validate this equation, the team performed several bench tests, where we apply different powers to the motor and we were able to measure what was the, the RPMs and the power experience and uh, plugging all those numbers into the equation we were able to see the difference between uh, we were able to see the reliability of that equation and these were the results that we got for the conversion factor so this is the difference in the error between our conversion factors and the conversion factor from Abel's equation so since they were not uh, very different, we, were, we went ahead and we applied the opposite equation to our motor selection. So we then re rearranged the equation and we, we set it up in terms of uh, power and propeller dimensions since these were all the dimensions we had in order to find out what was the required RPM for our aircraft in order to fly. And we were able to find a, a uh, KV of uh, 500, uh, uh, 500 RPMs per volt, which is the 500 KV that the airplane needs to, the motor needs to have in order to perform well. In terms of performance analysis, the thrust calculations are given by the following equations and the lift. And these are very important since uh, the velocity, uh, since the thrust and lift to grab coefficients, they, I, they help us to determine the velocity and distance required to take off. And this is very important as the competition requires us to take off in less than 200 feet. So we, 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 we obtained this results based on the, on the, on the prediction of 28.8 pounds. And the, the, the required the, uh, distance to take off was determined to be 196. So it's four feet less than the maximum for the competition. However, we, uh, we, during the flight, we flew around uh, 19 pounds for the last round, and we obtained the, the same uh, distance to take off. And now, that is going All right, so this is our cost analysis. Here on the left, you can see the price, the cost of every component of the plane, and as well as the total, uh, total cost. Uh, the main uh, component, the most, the servos were the most costly, and also coming uh, next is the wood and the electric motor. Uh, on the right, you can see the overall uh, expenses <coughs> for the competition and the uh, and the the project. Uh, of course, the.
So if you were just wrapping it up, you can just say it and then just go. Great. Well, uh, all right, so the, our environmental aspects, uh, most of the plane's materials were recyclable, uh, including made, mostly made out of, it's made out of wood. We also have aluminum on the landing gear and the main, the rod in the core of the wing, and some plastics on the film covering in the entire airplane. So the, the, for the global learning, we got to participate on the competition with teams from all over the world and see their designs. Also, the units, uh, the units, and and instructions for building our airplane can be uh, translated, making it easy to manufacture in many in different parts of the world. Also, the weight carrier in the competition can be represented by a, a fresh aid kit, um, a high definition camera, or any package that needs to be delivered somewhere. So our plane design can be expanded to mapping or uh, delivery planes, uh, which can can then be presented to companies in that area. Uh, well, I think we should switch to questions and answers. Okay. Uh, All right, do we have any comments, questions, team? How did you do on the competition? Yeah, the that was part of the, on the <laughs> last night. That was one of the slides. So overall performance, our team came on number six out of I think it was 47 teams in our in our class, mm -hmm. but it was a total of 75 teams competing, and there was only one more team from the United States to beat us, and that was the team who won, who came number one. Here's a, a video that we have from the competition that was one of our last flight attempts. Is there an obstacle course you guys have to follow? Uh, it was just a, a, a full 360 round, degree turn. A full round. And we had a, a takeoff distance and also a landing distance. And the landing had to be done after the line of takeoff. Okay. However, there was the, the advanced class where they had to drop a care package in a specific area. <coughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so that, that uh -huh. for us, it was just a regular flight. Uh, is there any kind of restriction in time from takeoff and landing, or I mean, what what? Do yes, you do have <coughs> 90 seconds to or to attempt a takeoff. Uh -huh. So if, if your plane is not successful taking off, they take off yeah, point. then you, yeah. you won't get scored for that run. I see. Also, any parts that fall off the plane on the run is considered a zero immediately. I see. I see. So that's the. Uh, that, those are the the competition results. Mm -hmm. Our team is. Oh, guys, six right here. No. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Who's number two? Who Number one? The University of Cincinnati. Do they have some kind of cost analysis you have to turn into this competition or just the design? Uh, it was just uh, the design criteria. Yeah, they needed to be under the parameters of the competition. There were no costs. There were no limits in the cost. There were even yeah. teams who had two airplanes, so one of the airplanes, like, if they crashed the airplane, they could just bring the other airplane as long as, as, soon as, as, long as the, both airplanes passed the inspection, they're right. good to fly both. Because I've always heard about this competition, but I didn't know how they do it, like formula, I mean, you have a design cost side. Yeah, it's mainly uh, design restrictions instead of cost. Well, I mean, you guys did a great job. I mean, six overall, I mean, that's great. <laughs> and we would also have, we also take this opportunity to thank, to thank all the for FIU Aerospace Engineering uh, members who participated and contributed. And also a special thanks to Mr. Nestor Pass and Kishan Capo for uh, their guidance and hours spent on this project, as well as piloting the plane. Also, Andrew Swedron for helping with the modeling and the SOLIDWORKS uh, simulations. Uh, Mr. Zicarelli for manufacturing the motor mount on the plane, oh. and FIU for sponsoring us and covering the competition and uh, registration fee. Thank you very much. Thank you.